Okay, welcome back, composers and arrangers. Today we're finishing out our discussion of the brass family with, of course, the tuba. Properties of the tuba. Of course, if trumpet would, is our uh, soprano, and we tend to think of the horn as alto, tenor, uh, trombone being tenor, bass, you'd call the tuba, of course, the, the bass member of the brass choir. That's that's fairly obvious. Uh, you can think of it as analogous to the contrabassoon, the woodwinds, or double bass of the strings. Uh, in terms of range, this is somewhat debatable because it, it will depend on the player and just how extreme their ranges can go. But but you can you can say this goes from D one, so the lowest D on the piano, to G four. And of course, you can extend this lower and you can extend this higher, uh, depending on who you're writing for. So this would be a low D. All the way up to the. I have written for that that high A and it is true above that G you're getting into a very risky territory there. Dynamic curve, just as we've seen with all brass, will be a crescendo to the top, from low to high. And of course, if we've, we've already covered that, that the tuba is related uh, to one other instrument um, in the brass choir, and that is to the horns because of their uh, conical bore and their the shape of their mouthpiece, piece, which, which is, um, flares out. Okay, this is why it just tends to have a rounder sound. It speaks a little less um, more immediately than let's say the trumpet or trombone. Um, so you can think of those two pairing very nicely between tuba and French horn uh, versus the trumpet and trombone. Rolls of the tuba, that's not to say that it can't be a solo instrument. In combination with other brass. It does blend well with trombones as a bass instrument, mixes well with trumpets and horns. And in fact, as we've seen throughout most of our study of the brass choir, is that, well, it they all tend to blend with each other. Of course, we do still have to worry. Well, not worry, but we have to take into account balance, um, because of course the the trumpets and trombones really have an advantage over the horns and tuba. Okay, so when we talk about the tuba, we're often talking about the, the B flat tenor tuba, F and E flat, and the C and B flat tubas. These are the most common C and B flat. Now, do you need to know all these these different tubas? No, you need to know the the basic range, the dynamic contour. And the the instrumentalists um, will be uh, reading in a different key, uh, so their fingerings will be different, but they, they will be reading off the same um, sheet music. So you don't have to do anything different to, to alter what's on the page. This is the good news. Okay, that added fourth valve. Think about the, the difference between, uh, let's say, the trumpet three valves, right? Or... Um, you might be thinking of the the trigger on the trombone uh, which does access a, a lower part of the instrument so this is the same idea with uh, the tuba and as i said all modern tubas are non-transposing this is good news for those of you who are, are new to the world of transposition and you might get a little bit turned around here and there Okay, related to the, the tuba are the euphonium and the tenor tuba, which you can see are, are essentially smaller versions of the tuba. Okay, in an orchestral setting, and sometimes even in a, a, a concert band setting, how many tubas will you have? What do you think, five, 10? Well, no, sadly, just the one. All right. It is possible to have more than one tuba, of course, and, and lucky you if you get 
if you have more than one in your ensemble. Um, you can call for two tubas if you want extra power in the low range. Uh, Stravinsky, Schoenberg, Harris, uh, they've strengthened the brass choir with, with the low and high tessitura for, for each. Okay, and in the late 19th century, of course, Wagner um, introduced new horns. We call them, in, in fact, uh, Wagner horns, uh, which are really just smaller versions of the tuba in various different keys. The whole family of tubas. Okay, in terms of different registers, you can see that um, this is this is the um, Adler textbook, uh, splitting up the three registers into low, middle, and high. So low meaning that low. Okay, deep and heavy. Very strong. And getting a bit weaker as you ascend. Intense, but it's a weaker timbre. And it is true, it's it's um, a little bit more, a little less vibrant, let's say. Uh, towards the bottom of the range, you'll notice that the, the horn, the, the tuba just speaks a little bit more slowly. It's sluggish. Think about all that air that needs to go through the instrument and reach our ears. It takes a while. So if you if you want a, a very rhythmic sound, consider bumping that up an octave or maybe even two um, into a range that will speak more clearly. You could also consider, well, let's give that rhythmic passage to the trombones because those will speak faster. And let's give the, the fundamental note, uh, let's say a pedal uh, to the tuba. Okay, it is agile in the mid to upper register. Good to remember. The mid range is smooth and round like the horn. So again, it blends well with the French horn. It is thinner and more intense in the high range, as we said. Okay, some examples for you. Very, very famous tuba solo uh, from this is Ravel's orchestration of the Mazursky. Okay, uh, speaks less quickly than the trumpet and trombone due to the large mouthpiece, as we already said. That's under articulation and tonguing. Slur slurred notes are played in one breath, as we've seen uh, throughout our breaths family, brass choir, I should say. Separate notes are tongued. So if you're not a wind player and you're unfamiliar with this, uh, the properties of, of uh, tonguing, um, you can sing this to yourself. Ta 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 ta. Essentially, you're starting a new attack every time. Um, you you have you if you haven't marked a slur, uh, then you will get a reattack. Okay, single, double, and triple tongue is possible, but much less crisp. Versus much easier to, to perform, but the resulting sound will be a bit less crisp than you would have, let's say, on a trumpet or trombone again. Okay, some powerful attacks. Okay, there are possible sforzando, piano, crescendo. These are all possible uh, and very effective for the brass. Muted tuba. Oh boy, look at that thing. 
technically it is possible, but is it worth it? Look how big that is. So it is a bit awkward to insert and remove from the bell. It takes a lot of time and it, it, it just, it looks awkward, but of course the sound is, is very beautiful and it is uh, possible to, to use a mute. So you could consider it. Uh, com a composer should leave ample time to mute and unmute noiselessly. Always good advice, especially for the tubist. Some special effects, of course, trills. Um, lip trill is similar to what we ask often horn players to produce. So they're, they're producing the trill uh, with their embouchure alone and not with the valves. It's going to be a little bit more raucous, a little bit rough around the edges, but totally possible and uh, a good a good effect to use if you'd like to. Flutter tongue or growl, right, which is in the back of the throat, either is possible and um, consider using it if you'd like uh, that kind of effect. And multiphonics work very nicely for the instrument. This is where the player is singing at the same time as playing. Um, you're not going to get very clear pitches in either case, but it will get a kind of um, effect between the two. So many people think, oh, well, I can write a duet now between bass and, an, and the singer. Well, it's not going to turn out as clear as you would have hoped, but it will, it will create an, a very unique sound. So you, you can consider experimenting with that. Tongue smacks. This is exactly what it sounds like. You're smacking your lips against the, the uh, mouthpiece, which creates a great effect. And think about that bell and all, all that air that's going through the tuba. Um, it acts as an amplification for that effect. A very, very interesting uh, sound you can add to your arsenal. And blowing air, that you can do this with all winds, but it's especially noticeable on a big instrument like this, which again has a sense of amplifying the sound. Valve sounds, just like with all, all brass instruments, it's, tap, it's possible. Tapping the instrument, squeaking the instrument, meaning you're, uh, you, you take your hand and you rub it against the bell, let's say. You can get a, an interesting squeak. Uh, these are all, all uh, sounds that modern composers use to broaden what's possible for the instrument. And there you have it, the world's fastest walkthrough of the tuba. So this concludes our discussion of, of the brass choir. And um, let's hope th that we can apply some of this information to your brass project. All right, I hope you're, you're having a wonderful day and I'll, we'll, we'll look uh, forward to exploring percussion, voice, and strings soon. Okay, take care.